next prelude is in your St. Augustine hymnal, number 132.
Good morning, everyone. The readings for today's Mass are on page 807. If you'd like to use a ribbon to mark that page, 807. We are beginning the season of Advent. Our opening hymn is number 130, 130. name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. As we gather here this morning and as we pray for our world, as we pray for our families, we also ask our Lord for ourselves, for his mercy, that we can repent and be able to grow in his grace and choose that which is right. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. <laughs> Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest mountain and raised above the hills. All nations shall stream toward it. Many peoples shall come and say, come, let us climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may instruct us in his ways, and we may walk in his paths. For from Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and impose terms on many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not raise the sword against another, nor shall they train for war again. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you know the time. It is the hour now for you to awake from sleep. For our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is advanced, the day is at hand. Let us then throw off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves properly as in the day, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in promiscuity and lust, not in rivalry and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the desires of the flesh. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. In those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage up to the day that Noah entered the ark. They did not know until the flood came and carried them all away. So it will be also at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be out in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill one will be taken, one will be left. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour of night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too, you also must be prepared for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord. If there is any season, at least in my opinion, I feel where we as Catholics typically do an injustice to that season, an injustice. In other words, there's so much power in that season, and yet so often we just blow right through it. We just blow by it. We don't pay attention. We're too busy. Whatever you have, it is Advent. Advent is such a beautiful season. It matches the weather here, right? 
It's meant to be a time of going really deep and having moments of just quiet with our Lord. But how do we reclaim the season for us individually in our own lives? So whether we have little kids here, teenagers, adults, those who are older, we can really have just a really great Advent season. It ties in perfectly with the example that Jesus uses about Noah. The people are just carrying on with their lives. They're just living kind of lukewarm. And there's this weirdo guy building an ark, right? But he's the only one obeying God. He's the only one listening to God. Everybody else is just walking around with their latte commenting on the weirdo, right? And so for us in the season of Advent, it's accepted, it's to own it, the fact that when we're obedient to God, we are going to be different. I'm not saying we're always going to be weird, but I'm just saying we're going to be different because there's an intensity all the time in our daily lives because we're following God, we're obeying God. The season of Advent also includes preparation so that we're, we're saying, okay, there's things in my life that aren't, they're, they're, they're not where they're supposed to be. So I can work on that. The season of Advent, though, is different than Lent. Lent really hones in on the last couple days of Jesus and to really unite our lives into that self-gift that we experience with Jesus when he suffers and he dies and he rises. But Advent, there's more of this just this joyful bringing Jesus to the world. He's coming. and We want him to come. We want to be part of that couple thoughts. So I know this example is silly, but let's say, for example, somebody came up to you and said, in six months, you're going to run a marathon. Was that 26 miles? Now you're thinking to yourself, yeah, right, that's impossible, right? But the deal is, is that you have to finish the marathon, even if it takes a couple days. You have to finish the marathon, because if you don't, you will go to jail for a year. Now, I think a lot of people would say, you know what, I'll just go to jail for a year. It'd be less painful. Just give me a couple books and I'm good to go, right? But you start thinking about it, say, okay, I got six months to prepare to run 26 miles. What would I do, right? All of a sudden, every little decision that we make through our day and night all the things that we think in terms of our physical health, mental health, emotional health, all of that is important. If you ever talk to these distance runners, they could be in the greatest physical condition in the world, but if they're not in the right place mentally, they're not going to be able to do it. Now, I'm going to change the story a little bit. Let's say, same deal, you got six months to prepare for the marathon, but you won't go to jail. Your family will go to jail for a year. Now, some parents are thinking, does that include my kids? <laughs> okay. So, one of the points I want to bring up today, I was listening to a, uh, um, a talk given by somebody as I was coming back from my mom's house for Thanksgiving, and he made a really good point. He said, we actually, in some ways, love our neighbor more than we love ourselves. We have a tendency to care about others more than ourselves. And when he was talking about caring for ourselves and the importance that that has, he's not talking about going to the spa. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but that's not the type of caring he's talking about. He's talking about the ability to make good decisions, to really choose what is good for ourselves, because he says if we do that, then the whole community changes. I want to talk about a few areas of our life where I think this is very true. And so we think of preparation, the ability to listen to God and to obey him means there's some elements of discipline in our daily decisions so we're actually available for him. I find a lot of decisions I make or we make actually hinder us from even listening to God, much less obeying him. So I want to talk a little bit about our health and Advent being a time of 
preparing to just to make good decisions so that we can obey him. So first, if we look at our body, right? So if you think of the mind, body, and soul. Now, remember as we talk about this, Jesus says, we are temples of the Holy Spirit. This is not just a matter of opinion or whether I like something or don't like something or it's my body, I can decide what I want. We are never just our own body. We are temples of the Holy Spirit. So think of our bodies. Now, in this lecture that this person was giving, he said, he said, when the average person goes to the veterinarian for there's something wrong with their pet, and they're given medication, and they've done little studies on this, by and large, 100% of the people will give their animal the medication and exactly the right dosage. You say, well, why is that? Well, because they care about their animal. They care about their pet. But he said, when we go to the doctor and we're given a prescription by the doctor, he says, on average, 30% of the people will not even buy it. They won't even go get the prescription. And then of those who do, 50% won't even use it as directed. And he says this gets at the element of how we treat ourselves. And he talks a lot about how our opinion of ourself often is impacted by our own sinfulness or the sinfulness around us in our culture. And so when we see ourselves as not being a temple of the Holy Spirit, we're more inclined to not take care of it. Now that was just one little example he gave. There was a statistic a while back that said 50% of all the health care costs in the United States, 50% of all the medical care that's provided is because people eat too much sugar, too much salt, too much fat, tobacco, alcohol, and illicit drugs. In other words, 50% of all the health care provided is because we make bad decisions. We become in some ways consumed by pleasure or the pleasure it gives rather than on making the right decision. So we know that we're kind of all in the same boat together. No pun intended. They did, I know I mentioned this before, they did a study of rats, right? And they gave one rat all the healthy food in the world that they could eat and they gave one rat all the junk food in the world they could eat. And they said actually the biggest difference between the two was that the rat who got all the junk food just never stopped eating because it was just about the pleasure. And they lost the discipline to be able to say no to the desires. Whereas the other rat just ate when they were full, they were done. Our bodies. Advent is a really good time to be able to look at the decisions that we're making. And the reality is in our culture, it's kind of like the time of Noah. He was surrounded by lots of not so good examples. It was really hard for Noah to pull himself away from the culture, at least the harmful things, in order to obey God. And the same is true today. You go into a supermarket here in the United States, and, I mean, there's an entire aisle just full of sugar cereals, right? How are kids going to say no to that? An entire aisle of just cookies, an entire aisle of just ice cream, an entire aisle of just beer, an entire aisle of just wine. If you took everything out of the store that we don't necessarily need to have a ton of, Safeway would be the size of 7-Eleven. So... One of the things I do love about traveling to poorer countries is they actually just naturally eat healthier because they don't have all that boxed food. Okay, to step back in Advent and say, how am I doing? Am I treating my body with respect so that I can be of service to God? Or am I perpetually struggling because some decisions I'm making? It's a good thing to reflect on, to prepare our bodies to be of service to God. Now, there's other aspects of the body also. Sleep, right? This is a big one for me. 
I have a tendency to stay up too late. When I get home, get home, I typically get home pretty late. But then it's like I go into this mode where it's just this unhealthy moment where I just despise going to bed. It's like I'm too lazy to go to bed. And so I'll stay up and use electronics or something, reading the news over and over and over, or just something like that, just because I'm too lazy to go to bed. So for me, Advent is a time where I will not use electronics at all in the evenings. Now, I've already had one night, and I actually had success. And I'm going to tell you what happened. In that one night, I got a whole lot of things done, and I went to bed early. But for me, the temptation to just not get enough sleep because I chose to not get enough sleep. Now, I'm not, I know I'm not the only one in that boat. The more stressed out we are, the more things we worry about, the struggles we have, the less likely we are to make good decisions in the evening. But to care for ourselves as temples of the Holy Spirit to make those right decisions. Advent is a beautiful time to do that. Exercise, right? I wasn't, I'm not gonna even go into that a whole lot, but a lot of us know that we have become far too sedentary. In fact, the closer we, the farther removed we are from doing any kind of work, like if we get, we get retired, if we don't have responsibilities, if there's nothing pulling us out of bed, we just naturally tend to get slothful. So to have things that get us out of bed, to have responsibilities to work, good things, right? The mind. Now, actually, I want to go back to the... Oh, I'm forgetting what I wanted to go back to. Um, oh, I'll just go on. So the mind. Making good decisions about what we expose our minds to. Right? So one of the thoughts that came into my mind with Noah is like the story of Noah with the, you know, the 40 days of rain and all that, it's like the first version of climate change, but it was divine. And it was because of the bad decisions. People had abandoned God. And I really do think there's a connection between the way we junk our planet, the way we junk ourselves, our sinfulness, right? And all of that tied together. In other words, if we see ourselves as temples of the Holy Spirit, then we will naturally care for the world even more. But when you watch, when you watch people and how they care for the planet more and more, it's because we realize we generate so much trash, whether it's material or in the air. And so we try to do more. There's more recycling people turning to electric cars and things stop using fossil fuels. These are all good things. We should use technology to be cleaner about our existence. But the same is true of our minds. What do we expose our minds to? Most of the media, and I'm not saying all of it, but a lot of it, if it's not bad, it's just worthless. It's, it, it has no value. It doesn't make our minds long to do good, to be inspired, to be courageous, to love more. And so to be careful and to say, is what I'm looking at, if I'm binging on something, which probably is never a good thing, right? Unless it's like the Bible. But if I'm binging on something, is it just because it's pleasure or is it because it's actually helping me to become a better person? Helping me, even just helping me to truly relax in a healthy way. Because we know a lot of the things we do for relaxation actually don't help us relax. Because they feel it's like it kind of rots the brain. It doesn't make it more active or healthier. So the ability to, to look at what, what are some things in your life maybe that you say, you know what, social media right now is just rotting my mind. I don't need this in this moment in my life, right? The news is not always the best thing to look, to watch, especially in the evenings, right? There's a lot of things that just aren't, they're, they're not gonna build us up in any possible way. 
But there are things that we know we should do for our minds. And as Catholics, I have to say, we're, we haven't always been the best about this. Advent is a beautiful season to just meditate on the scriptures, spend time with the Psalms. They're so beautiful, right? Spend time reading the Gospels or just other parts, the Old Testament. Growing in our faith, Advent is really a great time for that. When it's pouring down rain, pull out the Bible. Just have, have half an hour where you can just sit and just relax with Jesus. Coming into the church, right? If you don't have the combination to the door, I can give you the combination. Just come in any time during the day, any time at night, just to sit with Jesus. It's a beautiful Advent thing to do, just to be close to him. It's amazing what happens to the mind when we fill it with lots of good things. So spiritual reading, reading about the saints. Um, there's things on YouTube. There's tons of things on YouTube, reflections, homilies. There's uh, blogs that are out there, uh, Bible, Bible in the Year. All of these things are really great to fill our minds with good things. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that like watching a football game is a bad thing, but watching eight football games in a day is not the best thing in the world, okay? And so to be able to make good decisions there and say, I can do some healthier things. There's someone in my family who is retired now, but she was a nurse in the public school system, and she loved it. She loved being a nurse in the schools. But I remember a number of years ago, maybe 20 years ago, she said, she said, I have one class where in this class, there's only one student who has both parents still married. And I remember thinking about that and just kind of breaks your heart. Because I think one of the other things, when we make bad decisions, generally the people who are gonna suffer the most is not us. But there's this element of the innocence. You see that with Noah and the ark. God doesn't force people to change, but those who are righteous, in his family were the ones who were saved. But it wasn't just his family, it was also all the animals. Now that actually makes sense because they're innocent. They weren't at fault, they weren't the ones doing the evil. And so God rescued them in this story. And I think today of our bad decisions, who suffers? It's often the children, it's often those who are innocent. And so for us really to be mindful of that, as we make good decisions, not just for ourselves, but for even the next generation. I was talking to somebody the other day, and we were talking about how hate, hate is passed on, right? We see it. It almost becomes genetic. It's not genetic, but it gets passed on so early on in life. Kids learn to hate very early. And I know I made this point on Thanksgiving, but we expect violence when people are greedy and want power. We expect it. But more and more, you're watching violence just out of hate, just brokenness and just darkness. And almost all of these people who, like the last one, the one in Walmart, all of these people, there was just this place where... It was just a vacuum of love. There was nothing there. And yes, I'm sure there was some mental illness, but often there's trauma with that. There's hurt. There's emptiness. Places for Christ to come. The soul, to be able to care for the soul, these things is just prayer time to be really, really good about prayer time, right? Now, a lot of people, when they come to confession to me, I ask them, how's your daily prayer going? And a lot of people have really good daily prayer routines, but there's also a lot of people who really struggle because prayer is not the first thing they think about, and so it just, it just gets bounced around. It just floats in the day wherever we have time, wherever it's convenient. And that is not how we build a temple, and it's not how Noah built an ark. It wasn't convenient at all. So for us to be mindful, prayer was never meant to be convenient. 
It was meant to be the foundation upon which we build everything else. So Advent is a good time for that, to make good choices in terms of our daily prayer life. Now, my last point in all of this, Advent has a theme of peace. We see it in our readings today. It talks about, um, uh, what was it, pounding, shaping our swords into plowshares. In other words, instead of going out and trying to conquer a people or to try to, to fight or something, is actually to grow something, to produce something. There's a part in Revelations where it says that this, this river, this river that's flowing from the temple, so think of yourself as the, the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? This river of goodness that's flowing from it, it has the tree of life growing on both sides. It's nurturing both sides. In a world where we often have lots of enemies and divisions, and you have this fighting on both sides, Jesus wants to be the tree of life on both sides. And so you know, and I know, when we're actually living our faith, we're not just joining the fray of the divisions in the world, we're actually bringing peace. And that requires a lot of courage. We're going to have to stand out as Christians. We're going to have to look different and, and, and be willing to let the world say we're a little weird or different or inconvenient. But to bring that tree of life back into the world, to be able to make it uh, a place of peace. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. But the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord Jesus has called us to watch for the day of his return. As we enter this season of Advent, let us come to the Father in prayer, watching and waiting for his beloved Son. That all members of the church may deepen their personal prayer in the coming weeks. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that nations in conflict may hammer their swords into plowshares and find a just peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That men and women suffering emotional distress may find peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That in our preparation for Christmas, we may resist excessive spending let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that the dead may rejoice forever in the house of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear the prayer of the people you have gathered at this altar in faithful obedience to your Son who lives and reigns forever and ever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we may gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago to open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of our Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. For those of you who are unable to receive the Eucharist the at this time, we offer this spiritual Christ. communion prayer. The body of Christ. My Jesus, the body of Christ. I believe that you are present in the, the most holy Christ. sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot, at this moment, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn is in your additional music guide, page one.
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements. Uh, there still are some openings. If you'd like to join the Wednesday evening Bible study, um, you can sign up for that. Uh, just to... Remind, just to remember, uh, one of the things that we do here that's really beautiful is we do this Simbanga B Masses. We do nine Masses in a row in preparation for Christmas. So we cancel all the other daily Masses, and we have Mass at 6 a.m. every day. Uh, and it's really beautiful the way the whole community comes together and, and the opportunity for the Filipino community just really to share their devotion with us and to allow us to participate in that preparation time. So that starts on December 16th. At 6 a.m., all right? I know you think, oh, there's no way, but come to it. You'd be surprised. It's really beautiful. Uh, Holy Day of Obligation, Feast Day of the Immaculate Conception is December 8th. Uh, we will have Mass at 10.30 in the morning and 6.30 p.m. Uh, that will be a bilingual Mass in the evening. First Friday, this Friday, uh, we have exposition all day, so I invite you to just come spend a little quiet time with Jesus. We have confessions that day also at, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And then uh, also we have children's adoration from 3 to 4 p.m. on Friday. The, the prayer shawl meeting has been canceled for today. Um, Colleen is going to lead after Mass today a little children's story time. So if you would like to have your kids come, you can kind of go over, get donut and coffee and all that, and then maybe have your children join Colleen for a little story time. The office is open today. Uh, also, I announced, I was talking about how we need more Eucharistic ministers if we want to start offering the precious blood again at Mass. Uh, we did get some people signing up, but we do need a few more. So um, just want you to be praying about it. We had a lot of people at 8 o'clock Mass, not too many people at this Mass uh, so just please be praying about that uh, so that we can be offering the precious blood at Mass. Also forming our little security team. I'm not quite to the point of the draft, but I do want, especially the men, this gives the men an opportunity to do something. So uh, what the obligation would be is just it'd be two people who once a month are at another Mass. So this Mass, you're here with your family. But at like the 8 a.m. Mass, once a month, you're providing some, just, just monitoring things on the campus here, making sure everything is safe. And there will be some training provided uh, by, by some professional people on that. So please consider that, and you can let us know if you'd like to, to do that. Uh, reminder for those who signed up for our Advent wreath-making event tonight, uh, that's, it's at 5 p.m. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Number 141.